practice listening test for IELTS version 11. Instructions. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. Write all your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. You are going to listen to a conversation between Tom and Mary. Look at questions 1 to 9. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 9. Hi Mary, where are you going? To the bookstore. Would you like to go there with me, Tom? I'd love to. What do you want to buy? Some course books. Well, here we are. Now, reference, literature, science. Oh, what kind of course books do you want? Well, I'm thinking of buying some study skills for writing. I see. I wonder what section it is. Oh, I see them. It's over there. There are so many books about writing. Did you have any particular one in mind? Uh, Tim recommended that Jordan's academic writing course is good. Is it the green one? Let me have a look. Yes, it is by R. R. Jordan. I'll take this one. How about writing letters? No, no, it's too simple. I think this one, Write Ideas, looks good. Let me have a look. Is an intermediate course in writing skills? Is it too simple for you? I don't think so. I'm really having some problems when I write essays, so perhaps I should start from this intermediate one to improve my writing. Tom, do you want to buy something here? I don't know. I was just having a look at these grammar books. I bought one, Practical English Grammar, last Monday. Did you? I have that one too. It's very useful. Everybody says it's good. Can I help you now? Yes, I want these two books. How much is it all together? Let me see. This is £42, and that is £36, altogether £78. Oh, it's very expensive. Is there any chance of getting a discount? Uh, are you a student? Yes, here is my student card. Well, we normally give students 15% off, so that would bring it down to, let's see, £78 less £11.7, £66.3. Here is £70. Good. Here is your change. Tom and Mary leave the bookstore. I'm a little thirsty now. Shall we go somewhere to have some coffee? Yes, I'd love to. There is a very good one near here. Let me think what it is called. Uh... You see, there are two coffee shops over there. Which one is it? I think it's the one opposite the bank on the high street. Harrison's. That's the one we want. Let's go there. Yes, I think I went to Harrison's once. It has really good coffee. Yes, it is a good coffee shop, and the price is reasonable too. Tom and Mary are in the coffee shop. It is really good coffee, and I feel much better now. By the way, Tom, have you found your accommodation yet? Yes, two weeks ago. My friend Sue told me that one of her flatmates moved out to Oxford, so there was a vacant room to let. I moved in last Friday. It's a very big house, and it's very close to our school. Sounds good. How many people live in that house? Let me see. There is an American couple, Maria and Eric. They study arts in London University. And one Italian girl, her name is Margaret, studies economics. Then Sue and me, so altogether five people are in the house. Is Sue still studying English in the training course? No, she has finished her course already. Now she's studying music in London University. I see. How about your computer course, Tom? Oh, it's very good, and I enjoy the course very much. That is the end of section one. You will have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section two. Section two. First, you are going to listen to the continued conversation between Tom and Mary. They talk about rock stars. Now look at questions ten to thirteen. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions ten to thirteen. Hi, Mary. Do you like music? Yes, very much, especially classical music. Do you like rock music, Mary? No, I think it's too noisy. Do you like rock music? Yes, I do. You know, rock stars play exciting music, and they always wear unusual clothes. I often go to their concerts. Oh, do you? I don't understand why rock stars are so famous. Oh, it's because of their fans that rock stars are famous and earn a lot of money. You know, their fans go to their concerts, buy their records, and wear the same kinds of clothes. I see. Did you watch TV last night? No, I didn't. I went to a concert last night and got back home very late. What was on? Zed Hawkes was interviewed on TV last night. Really? He's one of my favourite stars. He is world famous and he's also very rich. At least I suppose so. He has given concerts in twelve countries and sold over twenty million records. Yes, you're right. He owns three magnificent houses, five cars, and a private plane too. What did he say on the TV interview? He didn't say anything. During the TV interview, Anita Lyons suggested that Zed should behave better because his fans imitate him. Yes, go on. He reacted very angrily and walked out. The interview lasted less than two minutes. I was disappointed when I heard this. He really behaved badly, you know. Like politicians and film stars, rock stars need the public. They earn their money from the public, so why shouldn't the public criticise them? I'm not saying that famous people should always behave well. What I am saying is that they shouldn't complain when they are criticised. If they do, they will lose their fans. I am not a fan of Zed Hawkes any more. Tom and Mary go to the afternoon talk about music. Now look at questions fourteen to twenty. Now listen to the talk and answer questions fourteen to twenty. For us today, there is a wide variety of music available to listen to and enjoy. The styles are many, and each reflects the time in which it was composed. Modern music also has many forms, ranging from popular music, jazz, rock, and contemporary orchestral music. The music of our age reflects our values, culture, history, politics, and way of life. Music and art reflect many aspects of the eras in which they were created. In today's lecture. I'd like to talk about a famous composer, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Mozart was born in Salzburg, Austria, and is reputed to have been the most naturally gifted musician that ever lived. At the age of six, a child prodigy, he could play the violin, piano, and was already composing his own music. His father, also a musician, knew of his son's extraordinary musical gift. When he was only four years old, making full use of his son's talent, he paraded young Mozart through all the courts of Europe to entertain the nobility and show off his son's greatness. When Mozart grew up, he took a job in Salzburg as a church musician. However, he quickly grew to dislike this work and left the post to move to Vienna. In a short time, he fell in love with a woman named Constance Weber. Despite his musical genius and no lack of commissions to keep him employed, Mozart's financial situation was not good. Although he was undoubtedly the greatest musician of his time, he failed to get a court appointment like other inferior musicians who were around him. As a result, he remained very poor. But nevertheless, he was still able to compose some of the best music in history. Towards the end of his life. A mysterious visitor commissioned him to write a requiem, or funeral mass. 
The visitor came wearing a mask, and to Mozart he seemed like a ghost coming to commission him to write his own funeral mass. The truth behind the mysterious man is that he was the servant of an eccentric nobleman who wanted to steal the piece of music for the funeral of his wife. The reason behind the mask and the mystery was that the nobleman planned on claiming the work as his own. Mozart never finished the Requiem Mass. At the age of only 35, he died before being able to complete it. At the time of Mozart's death, he was still very poor. His wife could only afford a cheap funeral. Mozart's body was dumped into a common pauper's grave. To this day, the whereabouts of his grave is unknown. Mozart was unique in that he composed music in his head. While he would be writing down one piece, another would be developing in his mind. Part of Mozart's greatness and eternal appeal is that, like none of his predecessors, his music is filled with emotion-filled harmony, personal musicianship, effortless handling of technique, rich imagination and colour. Operas before him dealt with heavenly beings, demons and figures outside the realm of everyday life. Mozart's operas are different in that they deal with real life. People could relate to the content of the musical dramas that they were seeing. One of his greatest and most famous operas is Don Giovanni. Don Giovanni is the main figure in the opera. He is a man who takes immense pride in seducing great numbers of women. We will take a closer look at that opera in the next lecture. That's the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section three. In this section, you will hear two talks about London's parks and some interesting places. Look at the forms and fill the missing information in the correct boxes. Look at questions 21 to 33. Note the examples that have been done for you. Now listen to the first talk and answer questions 21 to 25. Here are some figures for the number of tourists visiting the Royal Parks. The Royal Parks are the property of the Crown and were originally the grounds of Royal Homes or Palaces. In central London, these include Hyde Park, originally a hunting forest belonging to Henry VIII. It now consists of 340 acres of trees and grass intersected by paths, with boating and swimming on the Serpentine Lake, and horse riding in Rotten Row. Hyde Park is one of the most popular attractions. In 1990, almost 20,000 people visited the park. Kensington Gardens are formal gardens covering 274 acres and containing Kensington Palace. There you can visit the Round Pond, the Albert Memorial, and a statue of Peter Pan, the famous fairy tale figure created by Barry. About 10,000 people visited the park in 1990. Regent's Park was also part of Henry VIII's hunting forest in the 16th century. Today it contains the London Zoo, a boating lake, the Regent's Canal and an open-air theatre. It is one of the most popular attractions with over 25,000 visitors each year. The number of visitors to Regent's Park increased after a children's zoo was opened, resulting in a sharp rise from 25,000 to 32,000 in 1990. Now listen to the second talk and answer questions 26 to 33. Tick the relevant boxes in each column. 
First, look at questions 26 to 33. Now listen to the second talk and answer questions 26 to 33. There is so much to see and do in London. It's hard to know where to start, so in order to help you, we've listed the major attractions, places of interest and museums in inner London. If it's open to the public, tick in the table. If not, make a cross in the correct column. The Barbican Centre is a very good place to visit. It has excellent facilities for a wide range of cultural activities, all under one roof. Concerts, plays, art exhibitions and films. Home of the world-famous London Symphony Orchestra and the Royal Shakespeare Company, it also offers informal events and performances at lunchtime, early evening and at weekends. It is open from 9 o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock at night. Mondays to Saturdays from noon to 11 p.m. Sundays and public holidays. For performances, telephone 01-6384-141, extension 218. The underground stations are Moorgate and Barbican. Madame Tussauds is the place where wax figures of famous and infamous people can be found. It is open daily from 9 a.m to 5.30 p.m., including weekends. The underground station is Baker Street. St. James's Palace is at the corner of St. James's Street and Paul Mall. It is a royal palace within walking distance of Piccadilly Circus and is not open to the public. The chapel is open to the public for the Sunday morning service at 11.15. You can get off at Green Park Underground Station. The Museum of London illustrates the history and topography of London from prehistoric times to the present day. Admission is free. Opening times Tuesdays to Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sundays 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. You can get off at St. Paul's Barbican and Moorgate Underground stations. Buckingham Palace is the London home of the Queen. When the Queen is in residence, the Royal Standard is flown from the flagstaff. It is generally not open to the public, however, visitors are admitted to the Queen's Gallery. The underground stations are Victoria, St James's Park and Green Park. You are welcome to London and we hope you have an enjoyable time here. Thank you. That's the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear a talk about soil. Look at questions 34 to 42. Now listen to the talk and answer questions 34 to 42. Hello and welcome to today's lecture. Today we turn our attention to the soil. As you know, soil is made up of stones, sand, clay and loam. It also contains air and water. Stones are small pieces of rock. They are larger than the other parts of soil. The stones in the soil are of all shapes and sizes. When stones break up, they form grains of sand. The soil on the beach is mainly made up of sand. Since the grains of sand are quite big, there are many large spaces between them. Air is found in most of these spaces. Sometimes water too is found in these spaces. But water can run through these spaces very quickly. 
When water runs through, the sand becomes dry again. If you pick up some sand between your thumb and your forefinger, you can feel the size of the grains. Clay is made up of very small grains or particles. These particles are so small that we can hardly see them. They lie very close to each other. The spaces between them are very small. They do not contain much air. If you pick up some dry clay, it feels powdery. Wet clay is sticky and dries very slowly. This is because water does not run through it quickly. Clay holds the water back. Loam is a mixture of clay and sand. It also contains hummus. Hummus is made up of pieces of dead animals and plants. Loam is the best type of soil because it contains air, water and hummus. Hummus is important for plant growth. It also has many types of salts. Plants use these salts for making food. Loam does not become as dry as sand or as wet as clay. The soil in most gardens is made up of loam. Besides of these things, soil also contains living things. Plants live on the surface of the soil, but their roots are found in the soil. Animals live on the surface of the soil and inside it. Now let us talk about the life in the soil. When you look at the soil in your garden, you may think that there is no life in the soil, but you are wrong. If you examine the soil closely, you will find that there are living things in it. There are many types of animals and plants living in the soil. Some plants and animals living in the soil are so small that we cannot see them. Because of this, we say they are microscopic. Germs, or microbes, are microscopic forms of life. Many germs live in the soil. Some of these germs can cause diseases. Others are useful because they live on dead animals and plants. Besides germs, there are other thread-like plants called algae living in the soil. Microscopic animals called protozoans are also found in the soil. There are many insects living in the soil. Some of them, like white ants and mole crickets, live in the soil throughout their lives. Others only live in the soil when they are adults. Insects, like grasshoppers, dig holes in the soil and lay their eggs in these holes. Many types of ants live in the soil. Some insects, which dig into the soil, have legs which are specially made for digging. The mole cricket is such an insect. Most of the insects living in the soil eat dead plant parts, like dried leaves. Loam is the best soil for them because it contains a lot of dead plant parts. Other animals, like centipedes, Scorpions and millipedes also live in the soil. Centipedes and scorpions live on other small animals, which they kill with their poison. Millipedes live on dead plant remains. All three types of animals are very useful to plant life. Many different types of worms live in the soil. They are earthworms, roundworms, sandworms and flatworms, rats, moles and rabbits, animals which they make their homes in the soil also. We'll discuss these animals in our next talk. Thank you. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.